and Jesus resolutely took the road for Jerusalem. disciples to be quiet. I tell you, if they were to be quiet, the stones themselves would begin shouting. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday as we begin our journey through Holy Week. Today, Palm Sunday, come to our parking lot at 11.30 a.m. We're going to have a Palm Pick up parade in our parking lot, so make sure to stop by and pick up your palms for Holy Week, and watch Facebook and YouTube for a video showing you how to make your own palm cross. For Holy Week, we will have a variety of worship services. Monday, Thursday, we will have a Zoom worship service at 6 o'clock p.m. Check Facebook and your email for the link. Good Friday will be a pre-recorded worship service. It will be a joint service with First Reformed and Life's Journey UCC. And Easter Sunday, we will have two worship opportunities. We will have a sunrise service at 7.30 a.m. outside near the office door and the cross. And we will do a flowering of the cross, so please make sure to bring some flowers with you. And at 10.30 a.m., we will be worshiping in our sanctuary. We will be celebrating new life, rebirth, and a new start. Also, check Facebook on Easter Sunday and YouTube for a special musical offering by the Ruach Quartet. Make sure to check it all out. We hope to see you this Lenten journey through Holy Week. And this is our final pre-recorded Sunday worship service. We will continue to post our worship services online on YouTube and on Facebook. However, they will come out after we do our worship services at 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page for extra music and devotionals that might be spontaneously posted for our virtual community of faith. And we will keep the Eastertide celebration going. On April 11th, we will celebrate Holy Humor Sunday. On April 18th at 10.30 a.m., we will have a celebration of ministry together as I am installed as your pastor. The Reverend Eddie Weathers from the Eastern North Carolina Association Minister, he will be presiding. And on April 25th, we have the joyful welcoming of new members into our community of faith. Some people news. Troy had his surgery and he was released to his home and he is going to be doing some rehab at home. He's recovering, and I talked to him today, and he was very chipper. Carolyn, at this time, is still on the ventilator in ICU, so we ask that you continue to keep her and her family in your prayers. And Benji will be following up with specialists this week and possibly needing another biopsy. So please continue to pray for all those folks that are on our prayer chain and their recoveries. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prelude.
Our threshold moment this morning is based on the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what has been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Now, as you wave your palm, repeat after me, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes. Blessed is the one who comes. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. We have seen that the stories of Jesus' healing ministry are filled with words and deeds. When he rides into Jerusalem, the people had hopes he would heal the oppressive system they were living under. We know that his healing was not confined to that moment in history, but offers a new way of life that has made a case for compassion for all, especially the least, ever since. As we head into the events of Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation that can transform infirmities and allow us to move on. We integrate our beliefs and actions for the health of the whole. The parade of compassionate power we celebrate today is underscored by another healing story of transformation, symbolizing our ability to fuel our moment of recovery. We glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share that treasured beauty with others. We know there will still be pain, but we also know love will win. Join me for our opening prayer of confession. We have approached confession each week in Lent in such a way that we lay bare the brokenness in order to begin the process of healing. Along the way, we have acknowledged our need to restore our own holy vessels 
while attending to our role in the healing of the community and the world. The work of healing will continue as we integrate all we have learned with all that we will do moving forward. For now, we remember how hard it is to move from thinking to doing. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we have opened ourselves to healing, and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of putting into action what needs to happen. Help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are, fragile and susceptible to shattering and yet capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Friends, know this. You are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Jesus is on the journey with us. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are a part of this body of Christ, a community seeking healing for you, for me, and for all. Take a deep breath in. And let this truth fill you and breathe out with a sigh of relief and assurance that we are forgiven. We are loved. Amen. Now let us hear a contemporary word from William James. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. From Rob Bell. What we do comes out of who we believe we are. And from Julian Smith. You can't make yourself feel positive, but you can choose how to act. And if you choose right, it builds your confidence.
Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up, and he went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Please pray with me. Holy One, we come with open hearts and open minds. We want to feel your presence and hear your still-speaking voice through even words such as these. Help us to listen, to be transformed, to be challenged, and to respond in love. Amen. So today we are concluding our Lenten series of Healing and Recovery, Holy Vessels, from Worship Design Studios. Through this Lenten journey, we have talked about healing, our health, our physical, community, mental, intellectual, and environmental health. Today, on this last Sunday of our worship series, we focus on integration, working toward wholeness. This morning is Palm Sunday, and we have heard two scripture readings. First, the familiar story, a story of celebration, a story of cheering and shouts of Hosanna as Jesus arrives in Jerusalem triumphantly. Followers of Jesus formed a parade as he enters the city, laying their cloaks down and celebrating and cheering him as he arrived. Yet not everyone was celebrating. The religious leaders and the powers that be were plotting against Jesus. Jesus was entering Jerusalem, and yes, the crowds were excited, but the leaders were viciously and meticulously plotting against him. In our second story today, it is our last healing story from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus was arriving at another location. He had just crossed the sea and was entering his home. And similarly, people were very happy to see him, while others were calling him blasphemous. The people of faith were bringing a paralyzed man to Jesus so that he might heal him, and the scribes were in disbelief. They didn't believe that Jesus had the power to forgive and to heal And yet, he did just that. Jesus always had a tendency to rock the boat, to flip the status quo. When he entered towns, the people had a variety of responses to his arrival. He wasn't always greeted with shouts of hosanna and praise. People didn't always throw their cloaks down on the ground and wave palms and cheer as he passed by. There were many people that questioned his authority and his connection with the divine. There were many people that were threatened by his love for others, especially those that were oppressed and marginalized. The leaders of the time didn't want their power taken away. Because Jesus, Jesus brought with him a message of love and hope a liberating message for all people. His message was uncomfortable for some to hear. And in our readings today, we see that that message was difficult, maybe nearly impossible for the religious leaders of the time to hear. 
They called him blasphemous, heretical. They held on to what they had been taught and what they had known to be true. They held on to old ways of thinking. They couldn't imagine opening their hearts to knowing and experiencing God in a different way, to expanding their faith, widening the circle, and adding seats to the table. That didn't work for them. They were gatekeepers. They were judgmental and unforgiving. They were hanging on to rules that they manipulated and used to separate and divide. They didn't want to lose their power, their privilege. They didn't want to have to be welcoming of those that they judged and decided were sinners or outcasts or unworthy. It was easier to just get rid of Jesus. It was easier to get rid of Jesus than to consider a different way of being in the world. When Jesus arrived on the scene, he challenged people to grow, to spread a message of love and expand ways of thinking. Jesus taught of people over rules, of love over obedience. Simply, Jesus challenged people to be transformed, to work toward healing and wholeness. And we continue to be challenged by Jesus' teachings today. We are challenged to expand our views, to open our hearts, and to hear the message anew, as if it were for the first time. We are challenged this Holy Week as we begin to hear these stories again, to listen with fresh ears, to have a transformation of our hearts, Jesus wanted us to transplant our hearts, to get rid of the old and allow room for the new. I was reading about heart transplants the other day, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but there are two kinds of heart transplants. The one that you probably think of is called orthopedic heart transplant. It's where the failing heart of the patient is removed and the new heart is inserted. And there's another transplant called a heterotopic transplant. In this case, the surgeon leaves in the old heart, in the patient, and connects the new heart to it, basically creating a double heart. Now you might be thinking, why would a surgeon leave the old heart in? There are two reasons. One is that a new heart sometimes can help the old sick heart to heal. And the second reason is that if the body rejects the new heart, it can be removed without putting the patient at immediate risk. Yet here's the problem. When it comes to the heart transplant, the transformation that Jesus teaches about, many of us want the heterotopic operation. We want our old heart left in, along with our new heart. We want just enough of Jesus' teachings of love to rock our, make our rock-hard heart feel just a little bit better. We want self-improvement. We want to act like we're following Jesus and expanding our views. Yet, we don't want to have to completely change. We want to hold on to things that help us hold on to our power and privilege. And perhaps we want a plan B. If Jesus provides too much of a shock to our system, we can just say, if this following Jesus thing doesn't work out, I want to go back to the way things were, the way I was before. We might want an exit strategy, a way out of change, a way out of the challenge, of loving others, especially the ones that we find difficult to love. When Jesus entered the towns in our reading this morning, he was teaching of new hearts. He encouraged people to completely take out their old hearts, their old ways, and to allow their hearts to become new, 
to be transformed, to open ourselves up to experiencing and feeling a larger, more inclusive love than we could ever possibly imagine. Jesus taught us that all people are holy, that you are holy. Even in the midst of our brokenness, our wrongdoings, our sins, and in our trials and our sufferings, Jesus taught us that every little part of us, our flaws and our gifts and all, are holy. God loves every little bit of us, holy and whole. We sometimes get so caught up in rules and judging others, in thinking that we are always right, that we forget about the people. The people we may be hurting, belittling, or oppressing in the process. Jesus taught us that we are loved by God, that we in turn should love our neighbors as ourselves. And there are no exceptions. Jesus meant all our neighbors, no matter their race, their age, their gender, who they love, their economic status, whether legal or not, what they believe, what they have done, and what they have left undone. Every human being on this earth, period. I saw an image on Facebook the other day that made a huge reminder of this for me, and I hope it will be a reminder for you too. You will never, I repeat, you will never look into the eyes of someone that God does not love. So as you go about your day during Holy Week, take a look, a really good look into the eyes of the people that you encounter. And when you look into their eyes, take a moment to remember that you are looking into the eyes of beloved child of God. And then treat them with the love, respect, forgiveness, mercy, and grace that Jesus would have. Because Jesus humbly rode on a donkey into Jerusalem, and crossed the sea to heal because of God's unconditional love. A love that God gives wholly and freely for you. Amen. Let's pray. Healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust, that sorrow will end. We come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. Even when we cannot seem to believe it, even when we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel that there is no end to sorrow, that no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to our world, it feels like we cannot gain traction. We give thanks that when we cannot bring ourselves to the healing source of your love, there are others around us that through words and actions bring us hope once again. Help us to also be there for others and offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. And healing and loving God, we especially pray this day for Benji, Troy, Peggy, Julie, Ray, Lewis, Bonnie, Keith, Kevin, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, Anna, Justin, Sandy, Ross Jr., 
those that are hospitalized or in specialized care facilities, our homebound, and those we hold in the silent meditations of our hearts. We pray all of this through our divine healer, Jesus Christ. Amen. In this series, we have seen that Jesus' healing actions often get buzz from onlookers. This day, we have seen two different reactions from the crowd, shouts of adoration and scoff of judgment from religious officials. His words and actions seem to get one or the other praise or accusations of heresy. But he continued his work anyway. He loved those that were deemed unlovable. He proclaimed healing in the midst of despair. He urged people to give their best in the midst of worst circumstances. To be followers of Jesus is not an easy task, but it is the way that we become whole once again. To participate in the holy endeavor of bringing the kingdom of on earth as it is in heaven. And as we enter Holy Week, these themes will come into sharp focus. May we follow him, even to the broken places.